Zer week number 67. It's Zermis Eve. Kinda? Like, because it's the time right before Zer is going to be here on Christmas. So it's like the eve of him showing up. You guys know what I'm trying to say, right? You get it. You get it. You're smart. Starting at the bottom, we got Plasma Drive and Void Drive for those rare blue quality sparrows. Three heavy ammo packs for one strange coin. Five three of coins for seven strange coins. Three glass needles for blah, blah, blah. And one mode of light for two strange coins. Titans. You're getting insurmountable skull fort. Side bonuses of increased super energy on melee kills or heavy kills in PvE. And invigoration bonus melee energy on ore pickups. That's not particularly thrilling. The main bonus gets you an additional melee charge. You respawn with melee energy, and you gain transfusion for Stormfist. Note that this does work with shoulder charge as well, not just Stormfist, which is nice. Well, it's an improvement over its year one version, but was it enough? Uh, I, I don't think so. I know that it is a very viable helm for Golgoroth if you have a Sunbreaker Titan in the pit. The constant application of Melting Point is very, very handy for your damage. It's the same thing in Heroic Strikes. This can be very, very helpful for bosses. Constant application means a lot of bonus damage. I just don't think it ends up being enough of a game changer to really be utilized a lot of the time. Is it helpful to have? Sure. But is it the most pressing issue? Not exactly. In PvP, it's alright thanks to the improvement of Headstrong if you want to use Headstrong and Transfusion. But, you guys know me, I like my Armamentarium for PvP, so that's, that's kind of a, a personal pick. Hunters. You're getting the returning Acleophage Symbiote from Year 1. Side bonuses of bonus super energy on grenade kills or bonus super energy from special weapon kills in PvE, along with innervation, which is... it's okay. The main bonus gets you an extra golden gun shot, but you get a reduced timer for those shots. Well, if you have a good activation in PvP, then this is only a benefit. An extra shot is an extra kill. Plain and simple. It's all about the trade-off, though. If you have a poorly timed activation, then obviously you're not going to see as much of a benefit. All that being said, still a great, great PvE option. In PvP, or in PvE, sorry, you're probably rolling as a Night Stalker. If you're not, then you're probably using Celestial Nighthawk. Symbiote can allow you to make a few more orbs of light than you normally would, but Night Stalker has it pretty easy already in the orb generation department, so this is not terribly high on my list at the moment. Warlocks. Heart of the Praxic Fire is for you. Side bonuses of hand cannon ammo or fusion rifle ammo. That's okay. And you have your solar burn and solar armor options. The main bonus nets you further decreased cooldowns while in Radiance, and you gain more agility. Unfortunately, the main bonus on this piece of gear only really gets you one extra grenade toss, which I feel is like the main reason Radiance is so good. However, the boost in melee is there too, I suppose. These just don't feel like a significant improvement to me when I use them. That being said, the Sunsinger exotic slot is pretty open as an option since nothing really feels very, very strong, and I suppose these are an overall net gain on your Radiance ability. I'm just not super thrilled about them. Not super thrilled. Hard Light is the weapon of the week. Coming back in patch 2.1, no damage fall off, a boost instability, and a buff recently makes this actually an okay option for certain PvP maps. Is it in the top tier of weaponry? Absolutely not. But it does make for a pretty reasonable close range weapon if you can keep the thing still and if you are good about your positioning. 
with Mida being so popular again, it'll be tough to beat Mida at range with this thing. And with everyone just jumping around with the last word, it'll be tough to beat the last word's killing speed. But Hard Light is actually usable. It's not the greatest thing in the game, but it is usable. In PvE, I don't really recommend it too much. If you're going to be using an auto rifle of this archetype, you're probably going to be using Zalo Supercell. The Legacy Engram of the week is the special weapon that's year one special weapons, and this can <coughs> reward, excuse me, Prison of Elders exotics. I have heard complaints that these special engrams are not really that great at realizing what exotics you already have, but I don't know if that is a problem Bungie has officially recognized or what. Either way, any year one weapons that are in year two that you may find will unlock in your blueprint vendor. That is your Xur for week 67. Not the most thrilling of weeks in the world, but, you know, what are you going to do? That Xur. Hope everyone has been doing well. Hope everyone will be enjoying some time off to see friends and family over the holiday and all that good stuff. I know I've been working to make sure I have content while I am seeing my folks during the break. I know this week was a little bit light. Anyway, guys, I'm off to bed. Thank you all very much for watching. Have a great weekend. And I'll see you all next time.